No, really, your hat looks good. <clears throat> you sure? Well, yeah, you have to keep up the whole hipster now that you are known well, as a hipster. Well, no, see, here's what happens. Here's what happens. I ride to where I ride everywhere I go now because it's warm out. It's bicycle. Sunny. You're talking bicycle, about. Yes, yeah. my bicycle. And I have this hat because I can I can stuff it and crunch it and throw it in things. That's cool. And I can just pull off. And when it gets cold, and when it gets cold out, I can just wear it under my helmet. But that way, when I'm going in and out of places, occasionally I'll work up a sweat. Because I'm, I'm in really good shape. I don't I don't sweat. Uh-huh. Yeah. Um, but when I do, so I'll pull off my helmet. I'll just throw the hat on, walk into a, walk into a Man, business. This or product something. placement thing on Dead Reckoning TV is just <laughs> awesome. Uh, hi, welcome to Dead Reckoning TV. Uh, I'm Brian Matson, and this is... Uh, I'm Jay Friesen. Uh, this is the spindle portion of our program, where Jay and I banter and talk about what's going on in our lives, what's going on in culture, hot button cultural <clears throat> issues. We try to interpret it through the lens of our Christian faith to, with varying degrees of, of success. success. And so, uh, any hot button issues? Anything going on, Jay? Uh, hot button issues. Um, or just things that struck you of interest? Well, there's always something that struck me of interest today. Did you know? Okay, two things, and then both related. The first, my first spindle item, I guess, if you will. Two things, and they both relate to insects. One, Toyota recalled a bunch of cars because of spider webs. Because of what? Spider webs. Spider evidently, webs. Evidently, evidently, you uh, you put the um, the spiders will weave a web in this particular place of a filter, and it blocks it, and it can cause a fire. No kidding. Yeah. A car recall because. <clears throat> the arachnids have struck. In other news, That's really cool. they're recalling cars because you might get in an accident. <laughs> <laughs> that was completely random. That is random. Uh, right. So the other thing regarding insects, as I read, that was really interesting and kind of freaky, is that um, researchers have now figured out how to put uh, nanobots inside cockroaches in the sort of bioengineering thing, and it can reanimate the cockroach. As if they need any more help dying or staying dead. Or coming back alive. Yeah, it I mean, you know, the old, you know, you know the, old, the, the old joke, you know, it's not a, actually that old of a joke, but, you know, the only thing that's going to survive after a nuclear holocaust, cockroaches and the St. Louis Cardinals. <laughs> no, just, it's a little joke, it's a little inside baseball joke about how scrappy and resilient speaking the St. Louis baseball, Cardinals are. Speaking it of is baseball, baseball season, how are your twins doing? Uh, really, really, really horribly. Um you know, Dude, the in the off season, I know, but in the off season, we realized, you know, the pitching was so bad last year. We went and got some pitching help. This season, there's been encouraging signs. The offense has been scoring uh, the third most runs in the American League. We're scoring runs. Uh, the pitching is just as bad as it was last year. <laughs> so Sorry to hear that. we're in for a very long season, <clears throat> uh, Twins fans. Sorry about that, but uh, it should be fun to watch anyway. I, I'm just, we really haven't had spring really spring here yet oh man it's like 70 degrees the kids have it's been outside nice, but, playing but in the it's backyard. still kind of it's overcast and it's kind of a little still on the gloomy side and i just love turning on a baseball game somewhere where the sun is shining and the sky is blue and i just know this is coming i it's am coming excited here. i am excited to pack my kids in our bike trailer and bike to uh your men's soft church league softball, church softball league is coming up I'm i like to say <clears throat> we do have a deacon in our church who actually will sit in the uh, he'll sit be in the outfield behind the fence. He'll he'll drink out of his um, his flask and heckle at everybody. It's quite funny. Really, I didn't know about the flask part. I'm supposed to. Should I yeah. veer by there, like in the mid innings, when I'm ch- tr- chugging in? Might be. Well, Speaking of which, well. I was running through YouTube comments, and uh, <clears throat> somebody had a question about what we believe about alcohol, and I didn't I didn't respond because I wanted to respond on the spindle. Actually, and you I, don't have just, to because we actually did an entire segment of our show on that topic. Right. Well, I don't think he walked away understanding it. So all I wanted um, to say is I like alcohol. Yeah, uh, it's it's clearly it's uh, one of those issues that's been a, a, an issue of Christian liberty for you know the better part of two thousand years of church history. True. Um, you know, the, the, you know, I'm familiar with all the arguments about you know how Jesus didn't really turn that water into wine; he turned it into unfermented grape juice and that sort of thing. Um, that's really kind of nonsense. They drank wine um, as a way of getting hydration in, in the ancient Near East. It's it's. Um, this is a particularly American problem um, because of our history with uh, the temperance movement and uh, prohibition is a very American thing. Christians throughout the world generally um, don't really have these same issues unless you happen to be in a place like Ireland, I know, that they have a huge societal drunkenness problem. 
Um, so do a lot of tribes raises, in Africa. That raises a lot of questions. But again, this is this is an issue the Bible doesn't anyway doesn't condemn one way or, or you, the other. I really wasn't expecting <laughs> to answer anything more than what is. You uh, ask like, a theologian a question, you kind of get true. A, a hey, um, Ty, can you do me a favor? Can you go over there and grab a picture? I have, I have a picture up there. Now, last week, <clears throat> la- and we should introduce you for folks, Ty. No, um, he wants to stay off camera. No, we're going to introduce him in a minute. Um, but last week you were making fun of me about being a hipster. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, um, hipster. Is this a picture of Jesus? No, this is not a picture of Jesus. Well, <laughs> are you sure? Well, um, so anyway, remember when I said my dad, you know, was yeah, kind of like my, beard my dad was like, I want to do this thing called senior photos. <laughs> okay. I thought that's hilarious. Okay. Because, you know, he, this is his high school senior photo. As well as his... Did he hit puberty when he was well nine? As, as well as his senior <laughs> photo. So here's, here's his high school photo, and we'll get a, we'll get a close-up of that. Uh-huh. So as you can tell, um, as you can tell, my dad is just as hairy, but That's now a he's, high schooler? Yeah. Wow. So as you can tell, he's just as hairy, but now he's gray. It's fantastic. And, uh, I was. I told him the other day. I was really disappointed. He trimmed his beard down because yeah. he's been doing working on a job out of state, and he came back and he'd been growing his. But beard the white, the whole time. you know, the white, and he said this isn't what this wasn't like a a leisure suit. It was it was a hunting jacket or something like safari. Hunt, it's a hunt, safari coat. Safari. Coat. It's a safari coat. It's very very nice. So I thought I'd bring that in because I thought it was hilarious. And you know, we talk about your mom all the time, so we can talk about talk my about hairy dad. Your, talk about your dad. That's cool. Yeah. So he's so, done. In, he's done. And he he was he's been down in Texas working on a house. Yeah. And um, he actually walked into a restaurant and <laughs> women thought he was part of Duck Dynasty. <laughs> <laughs> Your dad looks like he could like, fit some Duck free Dynasty. food there, Pops. That's, That's pretty good. Uh, so on my spindle, uh, I just have to recommend that everybody go to thefederalist.com uh, and read Molly Ziegler Hemingway's um, article on the rise of the same-sex marriage dissidents. It's one of the finest essays I've read in a very long time. I've linked it on my Twitter feed and on my Facebook page. Uh, Anyway, she's talking about how there's this new... We're living in a new age of totalitarianism and intolerance. And basically, if you think boys and girls go together in pairs and that that's the relationship that the state should be regulating in marriage, apparently you can no longer be a CEO of a company as we're talking about this week on our show in our Above the Pay Grade segment with Eric Tietzel. Um, The the irony of that, of course, is that that's the exact opposite of diversity, when everybody has to think exactly the same thing. It's the opposite of, of tolerance. Anyway, so I was commenting on this, and then Jay sends me this tweet. Well, yeah. No, wait. Yeah. No, so he sent, no, he messages. He texts right. messages. And there's me. a reason for this, because you, you posted this article, and I thought, man, Okay, it's not simply enough. The way people are behaving right now is that not only should you not be a CEO of a company, but you should just not be alive. Yeah, it's so I tweeted you privately. I didn't. I didn't. No, it was just a text message. It was a text message. message. Yeah. I thought about tweeting it, but I don't know if that would if I would have pissed so off he, people. He, so Jay text messages me this <clears throat> message that I did not understand. In fact, what do you don't understand about it? Okay, now I'll tell you what I didn't understand about it. He're, he's quoting somebody by the name of Gavin Gavin McInnes. Gavin McInnes, Fox News guy, Vice, bunch of other stuff. Anyway, Gavin McGinnis said this, and Jay, Jay quoted it for me, and you'll understand why I didn't understand it. Here's what Jay texted me. Gavin McGinnis, if you want to teach America that gays are cool people, be sure to lunch everyone who disagrees. <laughs> Lynch. 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 Lynch! Oh, Lynch. Oh, the autocorrect comes back to... Him. I was wondering now why you never suddenly, responded suddenly to that. Suddenly it makes sense. If you oh. want to teach America that gays are cool people, be sure to lynch everyone who disagrees. Okay, you're probably, over there, you're probably over there thinking, I don't have that much money. I can't lunch everybody. Who <laughs> I couldn't understand it. Just it just doesn't work. I didn't get it at all. But now Sorry, I understand. I, and it actually is a really great point. I think um, I heard somebody recently, I don't remember who it was the other day, Talking about the real danger that the the LGBT movement is actually um, kind of inviting here is that the, you know the more overboard they go with this sort of fascist thing, like if you ever supported traditional marriage, you get fired. Um, the problem with that, and they're, th- that they're inviting, is that there will be a silent backlash. The silent backlash goes like this. 
companies will just stop hiring LGBT people because they don't want the drama. Exactly. They do not want to be the subject of a lynching or a lawsuit. You know, you, if you continue to overreach like this, you're just going to have a silent dissent that hurts your cause. So might want to back up, back off on the fascism. That's uh, that's my opinion. Fascist, Cassius, and other fungus. An album, <laughs> an <laughs> album by Crash Dog, circa 1990. See, this is why. This is why Jay and I. This is why this is a good segment. Okay, <laughs> because, so I do this real thoughtful I, kind of thing, and he's thinking, "Oh, that reminds me of an album from some obscure band." Because I'm speaking a hipster, of albums. Speaking I'm of albums. Hipster. Okay, I'm gonna turn you on to something here today. Maybe. Okay. Yep. So you turn me on to Shovels and Rope. Yeah. Uh, great, ago. great band. Yeah, great band. Well, my my uncle and um, cousin have turned my wife on to the Lone Bellow. Oh yeah, mm-hmm. oh, I'm okay. familiar with the Lone Bellow. Yeah, I just heard about them. Last uh, their night. producer, there, there is uh, Charlie Peacock. Oh really? Yeah, Charlie Peacock uh, produces ah, the Mr. Lone Peacock. Bellow. And since I follow Charlie Peacock on Twitter, I have I he he tweets information about all of his groups and bands. And so check out the Lone Bellow. Of course, he produced the Civil Wars, the now defunct Civil Wars. You know, they did fantastic. a performance. Uh, one of the directors that I work with um, at Capstan Visual, a guy by the name of Ryan Booth, has produced an entire. Uh, he's writing and directing an entire series called Serial Box Presents, which are live performances by all these great bands. Yes. The Lone Bellow was one of them. Oh, fantastic! fantastic. Fantastic performance. Good. So just uh, Google Serial Box Presents and uh, you'll be able to find that performance. Uh, another band, cool. another band. I don't know if you're familiar with, since we're talking bands here, this is cool. I you discovered too? recently, no, I discovered recently uh, the Milk Carton Kids. Never heard of them. Oh, the Milk Carton Kids. They are, they, they, I encourage people to check them out. They are kind of an old classic folk duo with just two folk acoustic guitars and they stand around one microphone and they're like harmonies a la... Everly Brothers <clears throat> slash um, Simon and Garfunkel kind of stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But they're original tunes, and the guitar work is amazing. You know, that kind of stuff is coming they're, back in. The kind good. of stuff is coming back in. You know, like good. the Lone Bell has a mandolin, you yeah. know? It, like, instead of doing just typical three-piece electric or whatever, we're going to start bringing in all these classic Americana, bluegrass uh, instruments, yeah. and that's, like, the big thing now. My next thing, given the fact that we have now, what's the new uh, show that has the vocal quartets and ensembles? I forget what it's called now. Oh, it's I don't know. Not the voice. I haven't something seen it. But I don't watch the voice. So. It's a it's a voice with groups or something. Okay. Well, anyway, so that this new show is coming on air and stuff, and so I think like the barbershop quartet thing might is come just back. Fan- fantastic. And this goes back to a point that yeah. I mentioned way long ago. I n- I can't stand watching shows like The Voice or America's Got Talent or anything like that, but I do appreciate them. I appreciate yeah. them because. Real talent gets promoted. I think we that's get true. Real talent. I think that there have been some yeah. seasons where you know, not the best person bubbles up to the top, and that where they get cut early. Yeah. I, I think that happens. But by and large, these shows have provided an opportunity for the cream to rise at the top. And I, I, I generally think that on a show like American Idol, when you get down to your top twelve or whatever, you te- typically you've got some very talented people who make it that far. And so they're yeah, they're good shows. Okay, I, I now like to. Before we before we close out our yeah. very short random show, um, <laughs> this is very random. It is very random. Now, I, you, a comment just came to mind about the whole like Molly Hemingway gay rights thing. What's a good What's a good response that we should have as evangelical Christians? Are you dropping to, a question on me without uh, any prep here. This is no fun. It makes it way more fun. All right, go ahead. Are you kidding me? It makes it tons of fun. Okay, yeah. So the question is, what's our what's our because people are going to be listening to this going, okay, well, yeah, but how does that affect who I am, where I'm at. I mean, how should I respond to this? Should I not hire gay people? Should, try, try should I not try to engage them in conversation because they might just lynch me or something or, <laughs> you know, throw yeah, beers at me not. at the bar or something? I don't know. Like, how should we, how should we, what's just a general approach towards this well, issue? Well, I think, you know, it depends on what, what are we talking about. Are you talking about just interpersonal relationships? Uh, yes. Um, well, yes, of course. And yes and the above. Or is it or is it more of a structural thing, like like we, as as I'm an employer, like I've got an employer hat on, how well, do I I'm think about Well, I'm thinking more, this, more, in a, more interpersonal. It's getting more and more, with all well, the hate going on, it's getting more and more difficult to everyone, even talk about anything. Treat everyone with, with, uh, with love and respect. And of course, you know, one of the reasons, you know, Christians, and, and this is, I know that you know, this is unpersuasive to a lot of people, but uh, the reason Christians are opposed to same-sex um, 
relationships is that we don't believe that they're fruitful or helpful to people. Um, we think that they're they're not good. So part of loving people is to look out for their best interests. So um, with that given, um, we're going to continue to oppose this. Um, and, and we're going to, but of course, we recognize that all people, this is, this is Christian Doctrine 101, right? All people are created in the image and likeness of God, in the image and likeness of the Creator. And so our treatment of other people is a recognition of their inherent dignity, their inherent value. So it's not hate at all. Nobody's hating anything. Um, we're recognizing the inherent dignity of such people. And so, therefore, we, we, uh, we uh, treat people with grace and with love, and we uh, try to be reasonable, and we, we want to try to talk to people. I always make a distinction, however, between the typical person who is just going about their business. You've got, uh, you know, somebody who's uh, part of a same-sex union going about their business, and it's fine, have a relationship, but uh, there's a difference between that and an activist, okay? The activist is the person who really wants to lynch you, thinks you're a really bad person, and, you're, and that, that sometimes is going to take defending yourself. Like, from lawsuits, from, hey, you're really out to, to lynch me here. and uh, You're really out to lunch. <laughs> you're out to lunch. <laughs> yeah, hey, nice. You're out to lunch. Sorry. So I think that it's, a, it's um, you know, there are nuances to be made as to trying to figure out, is this person I'm talking to, does this person have real honest questions about what Christians think about same-sex unions, or are these dishonest questions designed to trap me, paint me into a corner, and then throw a giant bee around my neck for bigot and, mm. uh, and tar and feather me in public? And so you've got to kind of work through those, those issues, because I think a different response would be required for both. There you have it. Okay. You answered exactly how I was hoping. Okay. Well, uh, Just got to fish these things out of you. Speaking of fishing, you got out yet? As a matter of fact, yes. I uh, was out yesterday afternoon, and it was very muddy water. And so I had the question, how muddy does the water have to be before you call it hopeless? And the answer to that question is muddier than that because I got five beauties. Well, I was just going to say they can't see you if it's that dark. Uh, you <laughs> so know, it's amazing. Sneak fish, up on them and yeah, club them on fish, the head. Fish see better than we give them credit mm, for. Oh, yeah. um, it was so muddy, you can, yeah, I can't see bottom, but I thought, I'm here, I'm going to fish anyway. I caught five beautiful trout yesterday. So I'm really excited about this. Okay, My father-in-law has been going on these corporate um, uh, fishing trips with his employees nice. every year to Alaska. Yeah. Guess who gets to go this time? Guess I better learn how you to know, tie something on a line. You know, I think that I you should have a little heart to heart with your father-in-law and say, you know, I don't even like to fish. I think you should take Brian. Well, I am paying my own you way, know. I think. Oh, well, <laughs> well forget that. <laughs> For the most part, I think I'm paying my own way. He might, That's cool. Like, That's great. The, the I would love to fish in Alaska. I have uh, <clears throat> dear friends who I live just, in Alaska. I'm going to go visit them soon. I, You know, it has a thing about being in the outdoors. I never was a hunter, but I started hunting last year. I love being outside. Yeah, it's great, I love an excuse it? to be outside all day. You shoot animals? Heck yeah, they're oh. tasty. Hey, we have an, an and they're, entire... Then they're a pain in the butt We have an entire... Uh, the rabbits are digging under... I'm not even going to go into the We have an there. entire segment of this show earlier. You can scroll through the archives about <laughs> killing animals uh, where we talk about that issue. So anyway, uh, yeah, feel free to scroll through the archives. Why are we, yeah, there was something going on that we were talking about that issue. It was hunting season. It, it was, was the start season. of hunting oh, season. Oh, that was when I showed up in my hunting outfit. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah it's pretty exciting. Well, this has been a cool spindle. We didn't. I think so. We didn't lack for things to talk about. No, so. I could talk about how I uh, tried shopping for cheap health care. <laughs> you know what? Let's save that for next week's spindle. Didn't exist. And, yeah, let's let's uh, save that right. for next week's Okay, spindle. wait, wait. we got to introduce people to Ty. Ty, come here. Come Ty here. does not want to come yeah, on come the here. screen. Come on. He's wearing here. like a giant neon shirt. And know? a neon hat. And a neon hat. No, come here. Other I wanna, okay, so check out my Vine. Go to Vine, Jay Friesen, or my Twitter account, and you'll see Ty. Because I was actually just going to try to embarrass you at my own, because I think it's funny. Stop embarrassing guys. Listen, you know Brian listen. and I. Brian and I are six foot three, six foot four. We're tall dudes. We're taller than most guys. Yes. Yeah. Listen, Ty's shorter than listen we are. Listen to me, and it's funny. We don't get much help around here. Would you stop humiliating the help? <laughs> He's like, okay, guys, this is like, guys, hey guys, really, no, guys, this is bad. Guys, hey guys. All right. Uh, it's hilarious. He's laughing. It's hilarious. This is Dead I Reckoning. Love this is Dead Reckoning TV. I'm Brian Manson. Follow I'm Jay us on, Follow us on Twitter, Facebook, The Reckoning TV. Have a great one.